EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's a Hobart Vans RV12 build, and it's another build night here in the RV12 construction hangar at uh, Hartford Brainerd Airport, Hartford Jet Center in Connecticut. I'm here with Mark Welch, and a uh, big milestone here in the RV12 project. When you power up a kit for the first time, it's a big milestone because the airplane sort of comes to life, and that's exactly what we've done here with the RV12 tonight. We've uh, put power on this uh, Garmin G3X Touch avionics system for the first time, but uh, it takes a little bit to get there. Uh, it's not just a matter of turning things on and uh, watching everything work. Uh, fairly involved process, but Vance makes it sort of easy with some configuration files and such. Take it from the top. What's it take to uh, make this thing come to life for the first time? Great. So first thing we did is, uh, instead of working off of the battery, we hooked up a power source separate from um, the battery so we could do this without draining our, ba our battery. But uh, basically, uh, Vans gives you a 17-page uh, uh, document that uh, runs you through the whole process of setting up the Garmin system. The first thing you have to do is go on their site, uh, Garmin site, and download the latest firmware version. And you put it on an SD card, and then you load that. Uh, that'll be the first thing we load. And then the second thing is a configuration file that you put on another SD card. So we powered things up uh, this morning. We threw the master switch. Uh, the system comes up and of course it's uh, out of date from a uh, software standpoint, firmware standpoint. So we put in the um, configuration, uh, the firmware uh, update, did that, and then uh, it recognizes through the CAN bus the rest of the components. After we finished with that, we uh, went in and uh, conf uh, loaded the configuration file and it um, loaded a lot of the additional um, information about the plane and the uh, avionics and so forth that are in here um, for this particular uh, you know, plane. Uh, the other thing we did is we um, brought the uh, radio to life and went through its configuration. And we're basically at that point right now where we've got most of the components uh, up and running. It's confirming things like our CGTs, our RPMs, and our manifold pressure, even though we've never started the engine, those things are showing that they're in green, that, that, that they're online and stuff. And we have just a few things left to do. We've got to hook up the EGTs, and we got to calibrate the fuel and things like that. So right now, um, we've had a pretty successful evening with uh, everything uh, booting up and, uh, and running. So uh, there's a process for putting the G3X uh, Touch LRU, which is display, into uh, configuration mode. And uh, how is that done? So basically, um, when you're ready to power up, you uh, hold, press and hold the menu button while you put your um, master power switch on, in this case, which powers up the Garmin G3X system. You hold that in until the screen reads configuration mode. And once that's done, it'll go into the configuration menu and you're allowed to configure all the various components. You can see right here, it's just, it just says configuration. So right now what you're seeing is the latest software version's been updated and so forth, and we're just going through all of the configuration items on uh, the um, menu. A lot, again, a lot of these have been populated, which is nice, but with the configuration file. Uh, it's now recognizing all the devices on the CAN bus, if you, which you can see here. Now we you notice like COM1 is not showing on because we don't have our avionics switch on. If we turn that on, uh, that will probably come alive. And also our transponder should come alive too. As you can see, there's you know a number of different menus for different things like the line replaceable units. We still have to calibrate the atahars and the magnetometer. Those things can't be done quite yet because uh, we have to have the, the aircraft ready to go. We've input information on the aircraft like the end number and uh, what type of aircraft it is and all those various things. All the basic, some of the stuff's been done by uh, by vans in their configuration file. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning that uh, that really takes a lot of the workload out of programming a system like this for the first time uh, because the, the RV-12 configuration files already has all this stuff configured. In fact, we even have speeds uh, already loaded into this thing. Uh, uh, these speeds and some of the other things that are specific to the RV-12 are already in the display, and that's a real time saver, I think. And a piece of uh, rudimentary advice to somebody doing this for the first time, uh, we sort of missed it, is uh, once you make these changes to the configuration or kind of specialized data that you're, that you're setting your 
you have to save it and reboot it and uh, otherwise it won't save the configuration we just realized that now as we're talking through it here on the video is uh, we didn't save and reboot so the save and reboot soft key which is down here in the lower right portion of the screen it's pretty important otherwise it won't uh, save all the data that you've just inputted so make sure you save it and reboot it and the other thing that was uh, really nice to test was uh, the comm radio and uh, this GTR 200 uh, Garmin comm radio is also has got a built-in intercom and uh, of course the, the RV-12 has got two sets of audio jacks for the pilot and co-pilot and uh, there's a fair amount of wiring for that and we were able to test it just fine you know we're talking on the intercom now and uh, of course uh, both the control sticks have got push to talk switches uh, which work we called ground control and uh, they told us we were loud and clear so we got a good working comm radio and a really nice sounding intercom I think uh, what do you think Mark? I would agree I think, uh yeah, and also this is a newer version of the Garmin radio which uh, is a nice feature of it is uh, when you put the frequency in it'll uh, actually tell you what uh, what that is for instance here 1 to 1.6 is a Hartford ground so it confirms that you've got that in there and stuff and we're just on our active com right now and you can switch back and forth the other thing about the, the uh, G3X is a nice feature is you can actually control it from the G3X screen so you could change your uh, uh, information here and it'll feed over to the uh, radio so if you're used to working off of the screen there same thing you can do with the transponder you can work it on the screen and stuff so that's nice features yeah that's the beauty of the garmin g3x uh, which uh, operates off a can bus so everything is uh, sort of connected in one big loop and uh, it really adds another layer of interface and uh, one other tidbit on this gtr 200 com radio is that it's bluetooth so you can bluetooth your uh, your smartphone to the uh, radio, you can make phone calls and uh, play Bluetooth music, which is kind of nice. Right, agreed. The other thing we configured was the uh, transponder, which is a little different. Uh, most of the other uh, LRU configurations uh, are done through the G3X when you load that software and it goes on the CAN bus and finds those different devices and uploads the latest version of software. Uh, but for some reason, uh, uh, Garmin, the transponder is a separate unit and you actually have to go in, uh, load a program in from the experimental, the Garmin experimental site, uh, load the software down there and then use a, um, uh, basically a uh, USB connection to the unit itself and then upload the software that way, which we've also done. And uh, one other thing we were able to test is the, uh, the elevator pitch trim. Uh, the RV-12 has got a uh, pitch trim command switch. It says rocker switch up here, and uh, we were able to check the uh, trim motor, which is in the, in the tail section. And uh, we got good trim up and trim down uh, action on the servo. That's all good. Um, uh, the wings aren't installed on this airplane. They're, of course, they're removable, and they happen to be off to save space in our workspace here. But uh, if we did have them on, we could check the lights. But we did check the lights when we had them installed, so we know they work. But uh, all in all, I think this was a good power-up for the first time. And uh, Mark's a pro, uh, <laughs> building a nice RV-10 uh, with a bunch of screens and a bunch of interface. So uh, it's nice to have Mark uh, uh, kind of heading this portion of the project. Uh, really successful night, big milestone, and uh, we're all pretty happy here uh, in the uh, happy camper, like RV-12 <laughs> construction <laughs> hangar. What's next? Uh, basically, we have a few more little things like the EGTs that connect up uh, up front. Then we're going to start to move on to the cowling, and uh, I, th I don't think we've done the exhaust yet. We have to throw the exhaust in. That's why the EGTs aren't up yet. Once that's done, we'll put the, the cowl on. Uh, we actually can uh, mount the propeller and the pitot tube and pretty much finish stuff up there. Um, we're, we're rolling along on this end of things. Good. Well, thanks a lot, Mark, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. A great night.